working. Go. All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Art of Healing with your host, Dr. Judy Jasek of Animal Healing Arts and myself, Matt Rowe of Parsley Pet. During our show, we are talking about your pet's health, raw feeding, and alternative treatments for cancer, unexplained illnesses, and supporting your pet's natural ability to heal. Welcome, Dr. Judy, to this week's show. Thanks, Matt. Happy to be here and happy to do some more educating, get some more good information out there. I love doing this. Yes, absolutely. And you said it is really trying to get out there as much as possible and educate and educate and educate this population of incredible pet parents that are looking to get that maximum amount of health for their dogs. So this has just been this. I love this show as well. And so we were talking at the end of the last show, talking about pancreatitis. And I've heard this. We've gotten multiple questions that have come over to us about pancreatitis and raw feeding. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And so where do you see pancreatitis with the increased fat concern that comes after, you know, when the dog ingests fats and, you know, the pancreas is not functioning to its maximum ability. So some individuals are saying, don't feed your dog too much fat on that side. You know, where do you sit on that spectrum in raw feeding? Well, I think there's, there's way more to the picture, you know, fat, fat gets incriminated, but there's, uh, when it comes to fat, first of all, there's different sourcing. So there's a big difference between your, you know, fat from factory farmed animals, first Mm -hmm. of all. So it's, it ends up being very high in omega sixes. So it perpetuates inflammation. So pancreatitis, like every other illness in the body comes from inflammation. So when we have pancreatitis, I look at what's been inflaming the body. So fat in terms of fat from factory farmed animals or fat from um, really unhealthy fats like trans fats. So these would be things in processed foods. And if you think about your average kibble diet, they put oils in, in those kibble formulas and then they're processed at really, really high temperatures. And yep. those fats are broken down and can indeed become toxic and become yep. inflammatory. And so usually what, what happens is, you know, a dog say gets into the garbage, or eats something, you know, they should, because dogs are scavengers, they're always getting into stuff. They find something, eat an old bone or something. They end sure. up with pancreatitis And the fat that they might've eaten gets blamed because part of, you know, what the, what the pancreas does, part of what the pancreas does a lot of things, but from this perspective, what the pancreas does is it secretes digestive enzymes that do help break down fat. So the fat gets incriminated, but I actually believe this pancreatitis, this inflammation, this was going on before the pet got into the garbage or whatever happened to set it off. There's, there's more to the picture. And, you know, again, pets that are over vaccinated that are on kibble diets that are high in carbohydrates and Mm -hmm. high in toxic fats. So the pet is already inflamed and it's like, it's like a smoldering fire and it's just Mm -hmm. waiting for that spark. Um, It's, you know, we got a lot of fires burning here in Colorado. (laughs) Think about it, you know, it's like, you know, all this dry is so very, very dry here. And all you need is one lightning bolt or one cigarette thrown out a window and sets it off. And I think the same thing happens with the, with the pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. I have, I have put many dogs with a history of pancreatitis on raw and I've never seen it be a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, these are individuals I may not increase the fat content sometimes for some patients such as cancer patients i might to make the diet more ketogenic i might actually Mm -hmm. bump up the fat content so i might not do that but feeding the raw diet is nutritionally so much better they're getting fresh Mm -hmm. food ingredients and we've got them off of the carbs we're not getting the Mm -hmm. glucose spikes and the insulin spikes Mm -hmm. so the body is so much healthier 
um, I just, I just don't see it becoming a problem. And, yeah. you know, I know raw food gets so vilified in the veterinary profession mm -hmm. and there's so much ignorance and it's really aggravating. It really, really just, mm -hmm. boy, I could just get up on a, on a soapbox sometimes because the vets that, you know, will preach, oh, we have to, you know, practice evidence-based medicine. We need, mm -hmm. we need research showing that raw, raw feeding is valid and it's good for pets, yet they'll condemn it without a shred of evidence. Mm. There's no evidence whatsoever. Matter of fact, I had a client today who lives, you know, a ways away from me. So she went into her local vet, dog has a history um, of some liver issues and we're going to recheck liver enzymes. She told her local vet that she was feeding raw and the vet refused to draw blood because he said, there's just no way this dog, the dog's blood values are going to be abnormal because it's eating raw. So but refused, refused to do it. I'm like, that, but that's completely preposterous. That's incorrect yeah. that the blood values would be off because when we test our, when we test our dogs at Parsley Pet, we're seeing actually better values that come out with raw fed dogs. I know, right? Again, it's in you ignorance. You a little bit about the sugar content within kibble. I've been doing a little bit of research on kibble and the amount of carbohydrates within kibble. Now, granted, it's a grain-based product. And even if it's not a grain-based product, it has a high level of carbohydrates, which equals sugar in the mm -hmm. diet. And so the amount of sugar we are feeding a carnivorous animal is causing, I think it's, you know, causing a lot of these health conditions that are coming through because the dog cannot digest the food that it's eating and it's no longer bioavailable for him. No, now you started to talk about fats a little bit. Now, could rancid fats, because let's say I buy a 30 pound bag of dog food, kibble, which I would never do, but I leave it out. Let's say I'm leaving it out in the kitchen or put it in a plastic container without a tight air fit lid. And I leave it in, you know, my kitchen and I'm feeding it to them. But after three weeks, that fat would become rancid. In right. the so do you think that plays a role as well, that we're adding this high sugar content to the diet and now we are adding rancid fats to the diet as well? Oh, Yeah. Absolutely. It's like eating a 10 day old donut or something, you know, it's like, I, literally, that's what, that's right. what kibble is. And kibble is about 50%, almost all of them, mm -hmm. even the quote unquote better ones, yeah. um, which there is no good kibble in my opinion, but they're right. all about 50% carbohydrate. And it doesn't matter whether it's grain or potato or lentil or bean or pea, it all yep. becomes sugar in the, right. in the bloodstream. And I think you're absolutely right. Then you take fats that actually become toxic mm -hmm. and we're going to inflame the body. And I think what happens is it's sometimes hard to connect these dots because it's different in each individual. And I think mm -hmm. each pet, just like each person, we sort of have our most vulnerable area in the body. Mm -hmm. We have a, an area that tends to you know, demonstrate symptoms quicker. Mine's my gut. I, I have to be careful about what I eat. If I get stressed every day, I get a stomach ache. You know, if I'm not, if I'm rushing around and I'm not sitting and breathing and, you know, yeah. relaxing when I eat, I'll so get a tummy ache. care of yourself. Yes, yes. Right. So that's my weak link. Um, other pets, it might be something different. Might inflame, they might get inflamed joints or mm -hmm. respiratory, um, you know, especially yeah. with, dairy and other things. Mm -hmm. So not every pet is going to get pancreatitis when they get into the garbage or, you know, eat this mm -hmm. inflammatory diet. Not every dog that eats kibble obviously gets pancreatitis, right. but I think it's that underlying inflammation that mm -hmm. just their, their body is so unstable because it's inflamed. Mm -hmm. And then if you put on top of it, over vaccination. So we're perpetuating yeah. even more inflammation. We give pharmaceuticals. You know, mm -hmm. I, I look at things like, okay, was this pet on antibiotics recently for mm. some reason? Or yeah. immunosuppressive drugs for itchy skin, things like Apoquil right. and prednisone. So we have mm -hmm. seriously disrupted the microbiome, which mm -hmm. is going to make them even more susceptible to these inflammatory. Um, 
processes because the dogs you know dogs we've talked about this dogs are natural scavengers they should be able to go out and eat all kinds of stuff if they have a healthy constitution Mm -hmm. to begin with but when they are bombarded with an unhealthy food and you know over vaccinating and Mm -hmm. too many pharmaceuticals it's so easy to just to tip that balance and there's this fear about feeding raw because it's too high in fat it's really not i mean most raw yeah. blends are not exceptionally high in fat some are higher than others mm-hmm. but a but a good balanced raw diet it's not exceptionally high in fat and like i said for some of my patients we'll add in additional fat i might not mm-hmm. do that in a dog with a history of pancreatitis sure. but a, a normal amount of fat Mm-hmm. is is perfectly fine. Yeah. And you know, you brought up a great point and also the fats that we are feeding our dog with a raw based diet aren't rancid. Right? You know, I'm fr- I'm only keeping in the refrigerator 2 to 3 days of a meal for both of my dogs at any one time and it's in the refrigerator so and it's in a sealed container so it's less chance for that fat to get rancid in itself so now i'm feeding a food that's more bioavailable for both of my dogs and they're processing this through them and also i can check their stools i mean their stools in the yard all look good and they're not having diarrhea they're not showing any of the any signs of anything But I like how you brought up the point that it's usually not typically just one thing. If it was that easy, I think the kibble companies would be out of business. If they could say, if they could really point to this is a, this is a smoking gun and this is actually what's causing cancer or this is what's causing pancreatitis or other autoimmune conditions inside of our animals. And they could point directly to the kibble companies and the food that our dogs are eating then it would be a mute point. We wouldn't be doing this show. We wouldn't be talking about raw feeding and everybody would just feed their dogs raw. Mm-hmm. But what happens is, is it's never just the kibble alone. It's the kibble plus the antibiotics or the medication plus the environment that they live in that's around if they're getting glyphosate and if they're getting exposure to other toxic chemicals in their environments that they live in. And then also you throw on like some, let's say something that is more on a side of stress. Let's say you leave all day and let's say you left your pet all day at home for 10 hours while you were at work and your pet is getting stressed out because you're not coming home or another event gets your pet stressed out. It's the perfect storm that adds to the body inflaming. And as you said, inflammation is a big indicator of health conditions. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, it's the source of, mm-hmm. of all disease, of mm-hmm. all disease. And, and there is, there's always, there's so much more to the picture. And I know when I see cases and I start to dig in, you know, what is the medical history? What has this pet been treated with? What supplements? So, so many pets right. are over supplemented. I think we had mm-hmm. talked about that on the show too. Yeah. That so many pets are getting into so their body has all these things. And when we're giving a lot of synthetics that the body has to has to process Mm -hmm. that just the body's having to work so hard to to stay balanced and right and stay healthy and like i said it's just that tipping point Mm -hmm. is it's just it's just right there waiting to happen but it is not because i mean i have i've transitioned so many dogs to raw food and i have never ever ever seen one get pancreatitis switching Mm -hmm to to raw food maybe a little loose stool you know some take longer to transition than others so it's a process but i have never i honestly i can say i've never seen raw a transition to raw food trigger a case of of pancreatitis yeah and have you seen switching to raw in actually help or improve the pancreatitis that might be in yeah Um, i mean i've seen You know, dogs, I mean, usually by the time, like if I were to see a pet that has a history of pancreatitis, they're already stable. So they do need, once that pancreas is inflamed, you do need to stop feeding. um, And sometimes they need to be hospitalized on IV fluids because Mm -hmm. eating, putting any, anything in the mouth, anything going in the stomach stimulates the pancreas. So once it's inflamed, we have to get it to calm down. So usually Mm -hmm. Pets with pancreatitis are hospitalized until they are stable again. But mm-hmm. I have definitely seen pets 
that have a pattern of pancreatitis that have had it multiple times and we put them on raw and they never get it again. So I've definitely seen that. Yeah. Okay. So really um, by going to her, because I mean, the pancreas is downstream from the stomach. And so as everything goes into the stomach, it's got to process through the pancreas at some point, it's going to pull out what it needs. And so if you're putting bad into it, or putting an overabundance of sugar into the pancreas that's from a kibble-based diet, yes, it's gonna cause additional inflammation. If your dog is sensitive to that, just like you had mentioned in your story of your stomach, my mm -hmm. stomach as well. If I eat something that the kids have made that I know I shouldn't eat, in my mind, I know I shouldn't eat it, but I eat it and then I suffer you know, at night as I go to sleep because my stomach's upset, but your pet, your dog might be going through a similar scenario that if they are sensitive to kibble, they are coming in and they could really, it just then sparks it again, just like us. Mm -hmm. So if you see a dog with pancreatitis and it's been, and it's stable, what would you recommend as a protocol for the pet owner besides definitely making sure they're stable and they see their vet and getting that, but from a protocol on what they should feed their dog, what could help them? Well, if they're, if they're not eating raw, I mean, I would definitely get them on raw. If they're otherwise healthy, mm -hmm. um, you know, young, healthy dog, they can definitely transition to raw. Definitely we want them off of kibble. Yes. Uh, so sometimes older pets, I might do an intermediate, do like a dehydrated or freeze dried raw, just to ease them into the fresh food diet. And sometimes yeah. the people need a little intermediate step too. But the key sure. thing is getting them, getting them off of the kibble, stop mm -hmm. vaccinating and mm. stop vaccinating. I mean, I think yeah. a dog, once they show these signs of, well, I think for any dog, but especially dogs that are showing these signs of these inflammatory diseases like pancreatitis mm -hmm. should literally never be vaccinated again. And Colorado does allow us to write um, a medical exemption for rabies. So they come due for rabies and we have this history. Um, I, I, I really feel that um, vaccines can flare up these old inflammatory patterns Mm -hmm. in the body. And the truth of the matter is once they've been vaccinated as a young animal, they're going to keep that immunity. And we, we yeah. really need to stop vaccinating and minimizing pharmaceuticals, making sure mm -hmm. we have good gut health. Um, does Do yeah. we need to do some probiotics for a while? Because we've had lots of rounds of antibiotics mm -hmm. for whatever reason or immunosuppressive drugs. Um, do we need to do some work to heal the gut? Um, mm. you know, treat leaky gut. So I always make sure that we have a good, healthy gut. We, in general, that's important, but especially with pancreatitis, because pancreatitis is part of the digestive tract and the digestion, mm -hmm. digestive process it works together. You start in the stomach and things move along and there's mm -hmm. an order of events. And if one part of that chain is not working properly, or in the case of pancreatitis is inflamed, then it's going to affect the whole, you know, rest of the process. So we need to make sure we yep. have a good, sound, you know, healthy gut. And then, you know, I follow up and see how the pet's doing. You know, we start mm -hmm. with a certain plan and how's the pet doing? Do they have good energy and good stools and, you know, no vomiting. Yep. The kind of the hallmark symptom of pancreatitis is vomiting and abdominal pain. It's, it's very yep. painful. So you touch, um, touch the pets kind of up underneath their ribs, like mm -hmm. kind of pancreas is the upper abdomen and they'll be really, really painful and just vomiting can't hold anything down. They usually won't mm. take anything in orally, but they won't right. even hold down fluids. And that's why they need to be hospitalized because they need to stay mm -hmm. hydrated and yeah. you just need to bypass the oral route sometimes for a couple of yeah. days uh, to get that calmed down. Yeah. Um, would you recommend like a raw goat milk if they are transitioning or making kind of that transition over and they're stomach is you can tell it's upset they're eating grass outside their stools are loose like they're seeing that stuff would you put them on like a raw goat milk or something like that something very light for them to that has a good amount of bacteria good bacteria in the body i tend to avoid dairy because i think dairy can be potentially inflammatory so i would mm -hmm. probably go more like with bone broth 
Okay. Um, bone broth, it's the same concept, like you're saying. So it's something very yeah. easy to digest. And actually the, the collagen in the bone broth is mm -hmm. very healing for the gut. So okay. I like to just on the off chance that happens to be an animal that doesn't yeah. tolerate dairy. And we don't know that until we give the dairy. Um, yeah. I would go with something like bone broth that's just very soothing to the gut. And even yeah. um, putting bone broth on the food, when we, you know, we're starting them on the on the raw, you can warm the bone broth and put that on the food. So it's a little mm -hmm. soupy. They're getting that bone broth. It's yeah. nice and warm. And so that makes it just real easy to digest. Yep. And really kind of come down. Well, this has been incredible. So I hope everybody takes away that Yes, we are raw feeding proponents and we see raw feeding as a big indicator of getting your health back in your pet. And so by doing that, making sure you're putting the right amount of levels in with your raw feeding is you're looking at bone, organ and muscle meat in the food that you're feeding um, your pet. And so really hitting those right levels, but you can improve the health of your pet by feeding raw and think about the amount of sugar that's in a kibble based diet and think about what you are actually feeding your pet and then think about yourself what do you like to eat in regards to what makes your stomach feel good and what makes your stomach not feel good in some of these lines and think about how your dog was originally genetically made is your dog has these big pointy teeth to be able to grab prey and tear prey apart but they don't have molars in their mouth to be able to grind kibble food the way that we think. They just swallow the pellet whole. And we think that they are digesting it in their stomach when if they are having sensitivities, it's hitting the pancreas, the increased sugar and all these pieces could be affecting their health. So going to a raw based diet is definitely one that can improve your pet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And again, you know, I would suggest if your pet has had something like pancreatitis, get some guidance from somebody that's familiar with feeding raw. I don't recommend trying to put together yeah. your own blends. There's good commercial blends out there that that we can work with. But mm -hmm. I, I would suggest getting some medical guidance or nutritional guidance from somebody that mm -hmm. is experienced feeding raw and yeah. can help you, you know, make sure the diet is properly balanced and help monitor the pet going forward. Well, that's an awesome segue for somebody to get in touch with you to talk about raw feeding and maybe the health of their pet or maybe something that's going on and do a telemedicine approach. Or if you are in Colorado, in Denver, come see Dr. Judy and book an appointment. How do they do that? What's the best way? To do well, that? my uh, my website, so my business name is Animal Healing Arts. My website is AHA Vet. Dot com. Our email is info at ahavet.com. And our phone number is 720-515-2421. I highly recommend it, everybody. Everybody that is watching this, see Dr. Judy. I mean, we're talking, spend a little bit of money to actually get that peace of mind and knowing and somebody that is as knowledgeable as Dr. Judy and not just raw feeding, but alternative treatments to all of these other illnesses that some doctors probably won't approach. And so this is something that I highly recommend to do is see Dr. Judy. So Dr. Judy, thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, thank you, Matt. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And if you ever wanna have your dog tested and find out if you are actually achieving the proper nutrients that your dog needs, Go to parsleypet.com and we can test your pet. And I can tell you at parts per billion if whether or not you're feeding enough calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, and 46 other different types of minerals. So thank you, Dr. Judy, again for this great show. Unbelievable information. So wonderful. All right. Happy to be here. Awesome. We'll enjoy okay. the day, Bye, everybody. everybody. We'll see you later.